Good evening, friends. Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. And uh, listen, those of you that like the news broadcast, I am so sorry, guys. I am. I'm really. I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. If that makes any sense, right? Uh, so many things biblically that are coming to my heart, and yet I, I just feel that I've got to warn people and to help people. Not just warn people, but help people. Uh, spiritually, because the attack, listen, if we were to take the news right now and take a look at what's going on, you already know. I mean, the world is in chaos. Wars are going on everywhere. Russia, now Germany with their, their you know, tank and the German crew in there and that creating more tensions. We've got the situation of Poland, uh, you know, <sighs> Zelensky saluting the neo-Nazi guy there at the Canadian Parliament. The Polish, uh, one of the Polish ministers calling on his extradition. A guy 98 years old, like you're really going to extradite a 98-year-old guy, right? I mean, even in that situation, I would say, look, go ahead, you try him. I agree, justice needs to be served, but extraditing him, the guy would never live long enough probably to even make it to the trial. Uh, so, but anyway, the point being is everywhere you're looking at, you've got Planet X, you've got uh, possible, you know, meteorite storm in May of, uh, of next year. Uh, they're talking asteroid strikes. Some of these things I've been talking about over on Patreon. But at the same token, as all these global events and world events are taking place right now, and of course, I'm not even going into these fears of people that are having about the next possible thing that some entities out there have in store for us here on this planet. I'm not talking about space entities either. I'm talking about, you know, the people that are right here earthbound here and some of the evils that they have planned for us. Look. We could take all of that news right now, lump it up together, and, you know, it seems like disaster on every side. And because of that, I am moved in my spirit more than I have ever been to try to help you as humanity of how to deal with the things that are going on in this life. How to prepare, besides looking at things biblically, maybe, of things that are coming, whether it be Planet X, whether it be the wars that we're facing right now. I mean, we've looked at a lot of scriptures on that. But there are some basic fundamentals that I want to really share with you as well. And today, I got inspired. I can't really say who because, uh, well, she'd probably want to beat me up for even saying that. So I won't say who. But I got inspired today because I shared uh, with someone in my family very personal uh, insights to help overcome the issues that sometimes that we hold with anger. And I, it, was, it was actually, it really caught me by surprise, some of the things that I was saying to the point that I thought, I need to go and share this with you because I realize that no doubt there are many people all over the globe that listen to this broadcast that no doubt have faced these very same issues. And so I wanted to share with you what I shared with some members of my family today, um, you know, mostly just for the sake of, you know, just the excitement of the revelation of God's word. Uh, so I want to take you first. I want to go right here to Ephesians chapter 4. Let's look at verse 26 as our main verse. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. So it's not a... It's not an evil thing when we get angry about something. It's the fact that we don't want to sin, and we don't want to sin by letting the sun set upon our wrath. If you have a righteous indignation, for example, in other words, somebody has wronged you, they've done something wrong to you, and you know, you're, you're, you're seeking the justice for it. Even if it's in a, in a situation like what our family has suffered ourselves, and you are seeking the justice through the, through the judicial system, you can do that. But do not let that anger that you may be suffering with, don't let the sun set on you in that regards. In fact, let me, let me just, if I can refine this one place here, 
Um, well, I'll just mention it to you because you guys are already probably aware of it. Paul talks about, you know, uh, I better find it. Let's just find it here real quick. Paul says, um, let's see, how does he put this here? Um, you know, the evil doers, I think, is the very word he uses on this. So let me just see if that pulls it up. Um, hmm. No, he, let's see. Well, that's interesting, though, because Job speaks about it, and so does uh, David in the Psalms. But, uh, but, but, you know, taking, let's see. It's basically Paul, there's a place where Paul speaks about where uh, the justice system was put in place to deal with those that, that do evil to us here on this earth. That's what he talks about there. In other words, there is a place for that. And that's what I was going to share with you. But I can't recall exactly where that's at. So I'll just kind of hold that for now. What I wanted to talk to you about, though, is how what it's like when we deal with anger and we and and because sometimes people they get angry about something that someone has done they do let the sun set on their wrath and that anger just does not seem to go away anger is is like an energy and it's an energy that like for example if you if someone does something to you and really makes you mad especially in the case of guys and the next thing you know the guy wants to just go punch the guy right upside his head for what he did and i'm not saying that that's right by no means please you know jesus said you know turn the other cheek right but let's say you do and when that anger is in you and you take and that guy makes that swing and he hits the other guy what is he doing? He's actually releasing the anger that's built up inside of him, and he releases it through the energy uh, of his body. And of course, his fist hits the other guy. The other guy suffers from the blow. You're going to suffer a little bit from the injury, maybe out of your hands, skint knuckles, whatever the case may be. But the energy is released, and once that energy is released uh, from the body, most likely then that anger begins to calm down. Some people take it out in another way. Uh, somebody does something to wrong them and everything, and the next thing you know, they're screaming and yelling at the person and just, and they're giving vent to that anger that they have, that they, that they bottled up inside because, or whatever, not that they bottled up, but whatever that person did to them, they're lashing out at that person. And again, what is it? The, the energy from the anger that they have felt towards however they were wronged is expressing itself out. And again, I'm not saying that's the right way to do it. I'm going to get into that in just a moment. But it releases the anger from them, hopefully anyway. Not Like I said, not to say that's the right way. And then there's a third way. And that third way is a person has done you wrong, but instead of beating them up or screaming and yelling and cussing them or, or, or any of those modes there, instead you respond by letting go. And when I say letting go, you're like, you release that anger by simply realizing, maybe in your heart you realize if the person was in their right mind, they would not have done what they did. Maybe you have the ability to be able to look beyond uh, their sin and to say that, or, or, or maybe you might think in your heart, you know, Satan anointed that person to do this evil, and I'm not going to hold that against them. Um, you may even try to go them and, and, and calmly, though they have sinned against you. You know, as the scripture says, go and try to reconcile your brother back to the Lord. Go and talk to them and say, look, you've, you've hurt me. You've done wrong. And you're trying to get the person to listen. And so in that process of doing that, you are releasing the energy. Uh, you're releasing that energy from your own spirit that you have by trying to rectify the situation, by forgiving the person, whatever the case may be, you're releasing that energy from you. And I'm using the word energy 
Uh, I'm using it because I'm thinking about the idea of when a person is angry and they go beat a guy up. It's it's an energy that comes out. It's the it's 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 that expression of that person's anger. But there's more than one way to give vent to that. Like I said, there is a way of trying to work the situation out with love, with brotherly love, sisterly love, whatever the case may be there. There is the, um, you know, uh, and, and even with that, I would still feel in my heart, if a person has done you wrong, especially let's say they don't even realize they did you wrong, you know, you still owe it to that person to go to them and let them know. And again, what are you doing? You're releasing that from your spirit you're not, when I say releasing it, you're not holding that grudge. You're not holding that anger within yourself. You are doing, as the scripture says, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Now, I say this because what happens, what a lot of people are not aware of, is that when people get, get that anger built up inside of them and they don't release it, They don't let go. Uh, and like I said, I don't justify the physical violence by no means, but they let's say they didn't beat the guy up for what he did. So, and if you beat the guy up, you, then you still got a problem because then you're going to feel bad what you did there and you're going to have to go make that right as well, especially as a believer because you can't just go beat somebody up and think that's the right thing to do. It's not. The right way to do it is to confront the person and release it through a Christian godly manner is the right way to, do, to deal with that issue. The, or you didn't release it by screaming and yelling at the person. And again, like I said, there, let's say it's a crime uh, 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 that is done to you that is so egregious that uh, it, it takes a person's life or... You know, it, whether you even be a believer, you know, but it really is a, is a situation that has become not just a passive thing. Uh, it could be that, you know, somebody burnt your house down or they, 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 they brought bodily harm to your family member or to yourself, um, you know, and, you know, and, and it could be a person that, Let's say maybe you're dealing with a split personality or something like that. They, one minute they seem to be a good Christian person, the next minute you know they they explode and and suddenly your your son or your daughter is in the hospital because that explosion has caused that person to cause great bodily harm to a family member. Um, you might have a situation. Uh, a man that goes to your church and seems to be a Christian his whole life and everything, but the next thing you know. Some poor child ends up being molested by that person. This is what the system, the court system is there is to deal with that crime. But nonetheless, if that has happened in your family, I could only imagine how much anger and wrath could be built up inside of you because your loved one has been harmed. So there's got to be a way that you give vent to that anger, and I'm going to tell you why in a minute. It's very important that you understand why. You can seek that justice because justice does need to be served, especially in the case of a child that has been violated. But at the same time, you have to, you have to give vent to that anger, and the right way to give vent to the anger like that is confronting that person. And once you have confronted that person, then the, the, the righteous indignation, as we would call it, can subside. And then you then pursue that avenue of justice if, that's, if it's that type of a serious crime. Uh, you know, it could be something that, but, but in, in most cases, if it's amongst brothers and sisters and things, it's generally going to be something like they said something that offended you. And maybe even the person will feel bad about it themselves later. And they come to you themselves and they're apologizing, saying, please forgive me. I did not mean to do what I did to you. These type things we know happen as well. 
But the reason why I'm bringing this out, the reason why I say you've got to find a way to release that anger and obey that scripture where it says, let not the sun go down upon your wrath, is because when you hold that anger inside of you, that anger begins to bruise you. Your own anger, your own wrath for an unsettled issue where someone has done, an, especially if it's an egregious crime against you. When you've held that in, you begin to take those blows. You begin to be the one that is suffering from your, it's as if you like the guy that, let's say someone did such a horrible crime in your family, and the next thing you know, you're just beating the guy up, beating the guy up for what he did, right? And it's almost like an uncontrollable way that you're expressing your anger physically, which I said is not the right way to do it. But if you don't go and do it the right way, there's a scripture that comes to my mind, and I, and I don't want to forget it right now. Um, casting our cares upon mm -hmm. him because he careth for you, right? Um, and uh, yeah, it's in 1 Peter 5, 7. I want to make sure that, that you guys can see this as well because this is what's important. This is part of how we deal with this, right? Uh, let me just make it simpler. Okay, humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant because your adversary the devil is a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. He would love to devour you with that anger, that bitterness, etc., and cause you more heartache. So once you have given vent, in this case here, you've confronted that person that has done you wrong, then it may take you casting your care upon Christ Jesus as well. Because maybe it's more of a burden than you can handle yourself. It's more of a load than you know how. You don't, maybe you don't know what to do with something like this. It's so great. And even justice of this world will probably never serve, in some cases, some crimes uh, that might give you that closure. But one thing's for sure. If you cast your burden upon him, he knows how to take that weight off of you. Because as I said, what happens is when you don't, when you don't put that on Christ to be able to get him to help you to deal with this, when you don't go and speak to that person that has done wrong to you and confront them and say, look, you, 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 you've hurt me. Or if you've tried to speak to them and they won't hear you, as the Bible says, take, the, take a, a, another brother or sister and go with that person and then try to reconcile, especially when they're believers. If they're not believers, it's a different story. You know, but still, you've got to find a way to confront them. And if you can't confront them, then you've got to find that way to where you say, you know, as I seek that justice that I'm looking for through the system that God has given us an avenue for, at the same time, I've got to let this go. I've got to cast my cares upon him because he does care for me. Because when you don't, you are suffering the blows instead. All that anger that you have built up in, inside of yourself, whether it's yelling, screaming, punching, beating, then you within your own being begins to suffer the blows. And then you become bruised. You become wounded. And then you become sickly. You know, when a person... I remember one time when I was uh, uh, when I worked for the sheriff's department many years ago. This one man, the police had beat him so badly 
broke his ribs, everything. He nearly died. The infections that set into his body as a result of his injuries were nearly catastrophic for him. And that's what happens even, and I, and I say this spiritually, but it's the thing is, is when we have taken on those things to our heart and we have not released that anger, then it begins to affect us physically. We become sickly. Your heart may be affected. Your blood pressure may be affected. Your bones may be affected. Every fiber of your being can become affected because you haven't put that, given that to Christ. And I want to, in closing, I want to share with some something with you about that. Have you ever looked at what Jesus did for us? You see, he actually did take all of our sins upon himself. Every sin we ever committed, every sin that everybody in the past had committed, and all those that every, every in other words, every true believer, he took and willingly took those sins upon himself. so that we could be made free. He took the sin of the law that had condemned us upon himself. And according to some recorded accounts, he was beaten so severely, he was beyond recognition. And even unto the point to where they hung him on a cross and humiliated him. Satan gladly beat him to nothing practically. And of course, that was the sins of the world. But when you hold within your own heart that anger and bitterness towards someone that has hurt you. You are now suffering something you don't need to be suffering. You also are beating yourself. You're allowing the punches and the blows to go into your flesh. And maybe you don't even realize that's the reason you're suffering the way you do. You might have heart trouble. You might even have cancer. All kinds of things that could be happening to you. And it could be as simple as an anger that you held against someone else. And it could be not because it was even justly due to that person. You might have been angry with somebody that did not really do you any harm. I'm actually mainly have been just focused tonight on things where they did do something wrong to you and you're angry with them, but you're holding that anger in. And if you've not released that, that the, the energy of that anger out, you haven't confronted them. You haven't uh, forgiven them. You haven't taken it to Christ. In some cases, though, we get angry at somebody and it's our own fault. And in that case there, as the scripture says, if you know you have somewhat ought against someone, I think it's actually the other way around. If they have ought against you, go and make it right before you offer up your sacrifice. You know, I'll share one thing with you, and, and I know I've shared this many, many years ago, but maybe some of you don't know about it. I got to see a little glimpse of what Jesus went through on that cross on Calvary. In a dream many, many years ago, and I've never forgotten it to this day. 
I was there on Calvary's hill after he had been crucified and he had been there for however many the hours were right before they took him off the cross. I felt it as I walked through his blood, his blood, literally so much blood that all around the base of the cross there, his blood was on the ground. It had already started to coagulate. It was sticky. And I couldn't bear to see him on that cross like that. He, he never allowed me to see above his waistline, though, in this dream that I had. And I don't know why, but he didn't. And I remember walking over to him, and I thought, it's not right for him to be on this cross. Not that it wasn't right for what he did. He took this willingly upon himself. But in my own heart, I felt like it wasn't right for him to be left there. And I put my arms around. I, his, his Literally, his thighs were about chest high. So he wasn't very high off the ground. But for me, his thighs were about chest high. And I reached around his legs and I remember I'll never forget it as long as I live his blood sticking to me and stuff and I was weeping and crying trying to get him off that cross you know friends I'm wanting everything I can to do all that God can show me right now and I'm learning myself as I go to help you. And it's helping me. It's helping my own family as well. There is so much and such depth I want you to know about. And this whole thing about Planet X and all that coming, yeah, it's coming. But you don't even have to be afraid of it. stockpiling foods and things like that. I've done it as well. You don't even need to do that. I want to get you to a place where your faith in Christ is so real to where death won't hurt you, hunger won't bother you, what you have need of will be supplied. You ever remember when Jesus sent out his apostles? Think, think about this, right? He sent out the apostles. He said, take no script. Take no purse with you. So, see, what is it? I think Paul said the labor is worthy of his hire. When they came back, they lacked nothing. God's got all different kind of ways that he can make that happen. My point is, no matter what we have need of, he will supply. Whether he does that through someone that loves you and, and supports the work you're doing, or if it comes down to the time that we need it supernaturally. I want to help you to believe for him like that. God bless you. Thank you for listening. And we do sincerely thank you for your love and support of the work we do.